You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. Hey everyone, I'm here with my friend Chris Wilson. Chris, it's so good to have you on the show and on the uh, on the podcast. It's been too long since we've had you on. Well, you've never been on, so I'm glad <laughs> to have you on in the first place. That is a very long, long time to not be on. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've been thinking about this. so the, the the challenge that I face in this uh, every season is who do I ask to be on the show? And there's so many people to choose from. It's really hard. I have to almost be like a, I have to be uh, selecting the right balance or the right collection of people for that season. So now it's your turn. And maybe, you know, sometimes waiting a little bit has its benefits, right? So you can have developed some things that maybe a year ago you wouldn't have. Definitely. So there are benefits that way that we, we should consider. So uh, welcome to the show and tell us who you are and what you do, Chris. Um, sure. Yeah. My, my name's Chris Wilson. I'm originally from... Uh, from southwest London in the UK, but I've uh, I, I've lived abroad for the last ten years or so mm. now. Wow! Uh, and I currently uh, live in Krakow, Poland, uh, with my wife, um, who, who's Polish. And uh, uh, I was an English teacher for a, a long time, and that's how I got into English as foreign language teacher, mm. and that's how I got into uh, sketch noting. Um, but now I've uh, about four years ago, I moved into marketing and I've been uh, yeah, I'm working in marketing uh, for mm. an IT company in their marketing department uh, here in Poland. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, tell, I, I always like to hear the origin story. So how did you end up stumbling into this space? Because every story that I hear is always fun and interesting and unique and like, how in the world did that happen? So I want to hear your story. Maybe it's uh, coming from, again, another angle that I could have never predicted. <laughs> yeah uh well um you know i uh i, I was diagnosed with dyslexia i'm dyslexic mm. or how, however people prefer to refer to it um when i was about um about 10 or something like this and uh, you know i never really enjoyed uh taking notes in class i didn't uh, particularly enjoy writing either which is very ironic considering how much I enjoy it now and how, mm. how central it is to my work. And, um, um, but um, when I was about uh, 14, I think it was, my dad gave me uh, a nice notebook and it was this little mm. A5 pocket notebook, which, uh, and he was like, you know, if you can't remember something, write it down. <laughs> and so uh, that stuck with me. Um, and I remember it had this little transparent cover on the notebook. And he gave me some really bright, colorful pens. And so I made this crazy design on the front of the notebook. Um, I don't think I would have called myself a drawer at that point, someone who sketched or drew or anything like this. Um, but that was, um, that, that became kind of mine. And uh, having those colorful pens uh, to, to take notes, to, to put reminders down, uh, and the you know the opportunity to do whatever I wanted in it was uh, was really something that built that habit, mm. um, which which then turned into being really important uh, for further studies. And I think um, you know there were elements of sketch notes in the kind of notes that I would take then, like I might include an image or I might make use of different colors to help separate sections there. But um, but certainly it was you know top to bottom uh, note taking, um, and it was only really until I uh, I started seeing these things on the internet called sketch notes. I think it was Patrick Roan maybe who uh, first shared something that that was what, a sketch note proper, if you might say, um, and, uh, and and where I saw them, I thought there's no way I can do that. Um, I can't draw that well. Um, but I also wished I could do that. Um, and, and the other aspect was just trying to, to arrange the information uh, seemed like something I, I just didn't think I could do. So, uh, so I kind of looked at it enviously for a while, but um, I, I had 
uh, where I was teaching English, uh, I had this piece of feedback after one, um, one lesson observation, which was I needed to consider my board work more while I was putting on the whiteboards and, and how it was arranged, how it was laid out and how it you know, demonstrated uh, these ideas. I think when, when you, you know, we were using these traditional whiteboards, not uh, digital interactive whiteboards. So there was a lot of drawing pictures to help represent things that people might not know uh, in English. Um, and then that encouragement to kind of consider how I arranged information reminded me again of this idea of sketch notes. And, and so that was the real impetus. Uh, and so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna learn this skill. Um, and I, I think at that point I picked up both your books uh, and kind of dived headfirst into the community. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, that, that was the key moment for me that, that changed everything, I guess, from kind of notes with a few pictures here and there, a bit of color to like sketch notes proper. Mm. That's really great. That's a great story. And it makes me wonder, there's some question, a line of questioning that, that enters my mind. And we, I talked a little bit about this in the sketchnote workbook, and that was using sketchnoting for language learning, um, mm. right? So you're a, you're an English uh, second language teacher, I guess maybe is technically what you're called. You're teaching English in this case to Polish people who want to learn English. And I wonder, uh, when you did visuals of those objects, was that, I assume that must be really helpful for a Polish person or anybody trying to learn English or an English person speaking person trying to learn another language to see the image of what it is to help them sort of solidify the word in their memory. Would you say that's true? Did you use that at all when you started to explore this idea? Yeah, ab ab absolutely. I think um, you know, uh, one of the principles we had was, um, was trying not to uh, translate is a, is a core was a core idea of the mm. methodology we followed because uh, when you when you're translating, then um, you, you know it's a different process than kind of naturally coming up with the, the language and and you can get into all sorts of issues with kind of mm. direct translations whereby you know synonyms may not be exact uh, or, or sentence structure is not exactly the same. So if you're kind of translating. Uh, if you're thinking in a translation mindset, then you um, you may uh, over you, you end up sounding like an English person trying to speak uh, Polish rather than like a Polish person or something like strange uh, sentence constructions. Uh, so that's why we were encouraged to you know avoid translating. And so one way you can avoid it is if you have the object and what the name of the object is for for very simple things. Um, obviously that becomes a lot more difficult with, it's very easy with like concrete nouns, firm objects, uh, real things rather than like an abstract idea. Um, but, uh, but even then, um, you, I mean, we know about some of these, uh, core parts of, of, of why sketch noting is effective for, for memorization and learning, um, it's um, it helps you to build more connections with an idea, with a concept, with a word. Um, if uh, um, you know, originally, I think I was starting off by like providing ideas to students of what they could include to to represent some of these um, more uh, abstract ideas. But then I realized that actually. Uh, when you get students to, to come up with their own ideas and when they they then share them amongst themselves and compare, oh, why did you choose this to represent the, that? Um, you can end up seeing that, uh, it, you know, that, that process also helps to really entrench uh, the meaning of a word. Um, I, I, I could go, I, I do have a lot of thoughts about using sketch notes in language learning, in, in teaching English. <laughs> Uh, based on on the experience, but um, if, if you want if you want to talk about that, we could spend the whole time talking about that. Yeah, well, that that sounds like it could be. You know, I know you're making an effort to to write more, and maybe that's something that you share mm. in a written form where you can show samples and sort of argue your point. But that sort of just popped in mind. I think in the sketchnote workbook, or if you look in there, mm. the section that I did was talking about sketchnote flashcards. So using yes 
you know, making your own flashcards. So you have, not only are you doing the process of drawing the image and writing the words, which for you as the language learner is connecting, but then someone else, well, I guess you could do them, you could use them on your, on your own, look at the picture and oh, what's that word and say it and then flip it over. You could do it with somebody else where they show you the picture and they can see the word on the back mm. and give you the thumbs up or the th thumbs down on your pronunciation, right? So that was the, uh, the application that I thought of. And I think um, I found somebody online at the time who was doing this already. Uh, so they were the example, I think, in that chapter of uh, yeah. how it could be done. That's where I got the idea from is, hey, this person is it's a really great idea. We should pass this on because there might be other applications. So that yeah. sort of that connection popped in my mind and I hadn't thought about that in years. What one of the things actually so so I I used to do that quite a lot with um with with kids who were learning English. Uh, mm. that we would make our own uh it, you know we had these activity books where there were sets of vocabulary that they had to learn. And so we might um sometimes they would provide kind of ready made flashcards that you mm -hmm. could you know, you photocopy this page and then the kids could mm. fill it in. But, um, you know, I would encourage them to make their own set of right. flashcards for each words. And and you'll find things like uh, what you draw for a house is different than what I draw for a house. And then you can, um, uh, you know, with really young learners who have very limited English, you can then feed in extra language and um, and you can help them move beyond just like learning a single word like a house to something that's a bit richer like a, a small house big house um mm. a cozy house uh, you know a house with a big garage or something like this um so uh, i i found that really um really interesting because when a kid draws like um when, when they both draw dogs and one's a small dog one's a big dog who looks yeah, one's an aggressive dog, one's a, a passive dog. Um, then, then you have an opportunity to um, to really personalize the language, and that helps it again helps them to remember things more. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's. A, I'm sure we could go off on a tangent here for sure. And um, I think maybe what we'll try to do is find uh, if Chris has written something in the in the meantime between us recording it and this post going up, we'll definitely put it in the show notes. And, sh and share that with you so you can sort of look into it if you're interested in it. I just I just love the idea of owning it, right? So if you when you create it, like that process of doing it binds mm. it in your memory of doing it. Like my rule, like, so the challenge that I have with language is I'm pretty good if I hear it correctly, I can repeat it. And if I repeat it a couple times, it gets, that's the way I remember it. And then I'll speak it again, you know, two months later, the correct way. But if I hear it the wrong way the first time or I misunderstand it, it's really a mess. So I have to be very careful about hearing it and repeating it uh, the correct way the first time. Uh, I know that's true from many experiences actually applying it and in both directions, right? Where, uh, mm. where when I've said something wrong like that, people look at me funny. And other times where, and particularly German where I've had the most experience, my friends will say, you sound just like a native speaker, right? Like, because I've heard the nuance of what they're saying, right? And can repeat it. So, I mean, I guess that's maybe a, a, a click toward, um, you know, um, listening, right? Listening is a huge part of sketch noting. I think I would mm -hmm. say it's the secret, secret weapon of sketch noting is listening. Like yes. I'd much rather see sketch notes of someone who is a really rudimentary artist or drawer, but does really good listening because they're going to pick up things that I find value, valuable. Um, rather than the converse would be beautiful sketch notes that are well laid out and drafted well, but they were so busy, like making them beautiful. They sort of lost the point of the discussion or they missed out on some really interesting ideas, right? You don't want to be on that side of the ledger. You want to be on the other side. And ideally, maybe you build your drawing skills well enough that it looks great and you're listening like the combo. That's like the, the chef's kiss perfection, right? Is when when it's both those things, which is the, you know, that's what you're always aiming for and maybe the hardest thing to achieve, which is okay, right? You've always got something to kind of push for. You, what, how do you feel about, do you mind me asking you a question? Go, go I, for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you feel about kind of having a conversation with your notes as you're taking them? 
I've heard that oh. term before, and I think I kind yeah. of do that now that you mention it. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, lately there was someone asking me when I do sketch noting. So what is it like when you're doing this now? And I've had more practice to to do this work. And the way I described it to them is like I th it's almost like I've got a little hopper, and as someone is speaking, I'm putting ideas in the hopper, and I, and I, mm. it's almost like doing a a recipe or something. Stuff's going in there, and I'm listening. And I'm making sense and I'm like, how does this all fit together? And then there's a moment where there's enough in the hopper like, oh, that's the idea, right? And now I, a lot of times I'll be just uh, not doing anything. Like I won't be drawing anything or maybe I'm cleaning something up, right? And then that the idea crystallizes and then I'll start putting it down. And it's in my own words, right? So I'm reinterpreting it in my own understanding and putting it on the page or doing an image to represent that idea. And I think when I get to that place, that seems like, when I like my sketch notes best, when I feel like they represent my thoughts best is when I'm able to do that. And sometimes it's, you know, getting in that focus is not easy, right? If you're distracted or yes. you're rushed or it's hard to get yourself into that flow state, I guess, where you're able to sort of listen to the argument and say, okay, you're starting, to, you're almost like visualizing the structure of where the speaker is heading, mm. um, right? For me, <laughs> The thing that sometimes drives my wife crazy is I'll watch movies and TV shows and like I'm starting to like take in information about what's happening and all the characters and how it's where the shape is going. And it's like, I think the next thing that happens logically would be this thing. And then and then it happens yeah. and, you know, I'll point at my wife. See, right? <laughs> like so not, not, I would say I don't always do that, but there's times where it just becomes so clear, like, well, the next logical thing is or the next illogical thing, but the right thing is this thing to happen, right? Like, this is what everybody expects, but the movie or the show wants to throw a curveball at you, so they're going to do the opposite thing, right? So then, well then, this is what I would expect to happen, so they're probably going to do that thing instead, right? Like, so, uh, now we're, yeah, we're I think getting off on know, tangents about movies, so sorry about that. <laughs> when you know things about plot, and plot typical yeah. plot structure like the hero's journey or something right like oh well i think it's 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 about time for the you know the um climax with the mm -hmm. showdown or yeah. oh no he's at the pit of despair right now so <laughs> it's time for the guy to show up again or something yeah. like this yeah exactly um yeah that could be um i i i asked about like uh you know having a conversation because i i think it's um it's one of the things that I've noticed in like, it's one of the things I try and do more now where I might leave a note to myself, like, mm. is this really true mm. or something like that? Or what, what's the evidence for this? Right. Might be another one. Or, or, or even what uh, do I think about this? Do I, be, yeah. Does this yeah. make sense? Or, or? or adding in like, uh, oh, this is a bit like something else I've mm. heard around this thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, it applies to language learning as well, where, you know, if you come across a new word, uh, especially if you don't have, if you come across it in context, you don't have the translation. And then you have to kind of work out like, oh, I think from context and something, mm. it's like this. But mm. then how is it different from, uh, you know, the synonym, the near synonym? Is there like... Um, so you know is it perhaps more formal or less formal is it uh is it something that goes with a uh, is this a noun which goes with a particular verb and that's why it goes in this order or or uh oh, this is the verb instead of the noun or something like that and uh so uh, if this is a new verb i know how they the ending should go typically so does that mean that i should conjugate it this way this way this way mm. uh and, and things like this um mm. you know uh which um it, it, so if someone's doing that and having a conversation in their sketch notes they're kind of like adding those questions i think that can be um really useful to help uh you know basically i the thing i i found about language learning is the more you think about something the easier it is to remember it and hmm. the more in the different ways that you think about it so that's why kind of adding a picture helps you to think about it more uh associating a memory like the more emotional connection you have to something then the easier it is to remember which is why people can talk about topics which are closer to their heart than um than topics that don't know less well and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. things like this interesting um this brings me to the thought how 
so how are you applying sketch notes in two places? One, well, I guess most people, for most people, work. Is there any way you're applying at work? Maybe you're not. And then personally, I know you've talked a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, knowledge management, um, second brain. There's different terms people use for it, and there's a slew of different apps that can achieve it. And they typically revolve around text. So like Notion and Obsidian, and there's a few other ones I'm sure that I'm missing. Um, so talk about those two things. Maybe those even overlap, right? Maybe, you, maybe you're using that same concept for work and for your personal life. And how does that all tie together? Because it seems like that was a direction you were heading in. And I think there's mm. maybe sketch noters out there that are thinking, what is this Notion Obsidian, this <laughs> approach like linked notes thing? Is, is this something I should use? Does it benefit me? Maybe you're sort of a representative of how this maybe could help someone. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, starting, starting with work, I mean, I definitely don't use sketch notes as much as I uh, used to for my work because um, you know, when I, back when I was teaching and in front of a class for you know, hours a day, I was using sketch notes every day and uh, I'd prepare worksheets using sketch notes and so on. Uh, whereas, um, you know, I still use sketch notes when I'm uh, taking notes from a meeting. Um, I'll create my own ones there. Uh, I, I still use the skills to help uh, explain processes sometimes uh, to people. I might just map out a quick sketch note and send that through to someone, uh, send, send an image. Um, it, it can be surprisingly useful for creating um, kind of vague outlines and mock-ups of a graphic that we may create <laughs> to share some information uh yeah oh what about if we do something like this that would help to show you know this versus this concept versus a different concept so uh so i use it for things like that mostly but it's, it is a lot more personal um uh, and especially since um the place where i'm working now where you know since pandemic we've been almost completely remote. Uh, when I started, uh, you know, I was the only person in, in Krakow. The, other, the rest of the team members were, were in the UK and, uh, and, and dotted around some other places as well. And, uh, and now we have more people in Krakow, but we're still kind of uh, not going to the office that often. So we're not using those things for, but you know, we d I'm not doing kind of graphic facilitation in meetings or something like that. Uh, but I, which I think would be a great thing to learn and could be very useful, uh, which I'd like to. Uh, but so, I, so I think personal use is, is much more the case uh, for me. And um, you know, I when it comes to personal use, I, I use it for like I enjoy learning things. Um, I, I I created a website which was basically around that idea, kind of of uh, I call it learn, create, share, which was kind of like a process that I thought where I, I like to learn something, I like to create something, sketch note with that knowledge, and I like to share that <laughs> with some other people. Um, so um, so yeah, I. Um, so I created that and um, and so it might be like reading through a book, attending a conference or, uh, you know, for my, um, you know, I'm a Christian. So I attend church every week and take sermon sketch notes. Um, but uh, yeah, over uh, and, and sketch noting really was my way of, of saving information. Uh, it, it took over from I think I was using Evernote uh, before that uh, because it was the first of these cloud things. Uh, but then um, I can't remember exactly how long ago it was. Someone introduced me to to Notion uh, as a kind of Evernote replacement, and uh, my first thought was just to use it to save things like PDFs or or something like that that I wanted to read. Um, and um, in the end, I decided that Notion was a bit too um, too structured for me, and that it ended up with me. Um, it, it you really it really wants you to to build a structure and then use that structure. But I found that I would just build and tweak and tweak and tweak and not really use it that much. Mm. Um, so I I then moved to Obsidian partially because it was free to get started <laughs> using. Um, and yeah, it's 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 uh, one of these personal knowledge management apps where um, and, and you can consider this the same as like an old notes app uh, 
that has been around for ages, something like Apple Notes or Evernote or, or Microsoft OneNote. Um, but the, this nod, um, modern group have introduced like a new feature, which, uh, which, which is quite interesting, um, called uh, which are these uh, Wikipedia-style backlinks. So you can create a, uh, a bi-directional link between things. So let's say you made a, um, a sketch note on, uh, let me pick let, uh, a sketch note on a book summary. Uh, okay. So the last, um, I'm, I'm actually just about to prepare one. <laughs> I've started uh, on a book I just finished reading called The Alter Ego Effect, which is about uh, using alter egos to help you combat uh, imposter syndrome. And, and achieve greater performance in sports or professional fields and stuff like this. Um, so, so I could use, I could create a note where I'd have my image in that note, a sketch note that I've created and prepared. And then I could uh, link that to, uh, to perhaps notes that I've written on the book or an article that I prepare as a book summary. Um, I could have use tags because it also includes tagging functionality to put that as like a book summary or sketch note as well. So I can denote it those two ways. I could put it in a folder if I wanted along with other sketch notes. Uh, but um, the, the kind of unique aspects of these um, bi-directional links is then you can, uh, they also tend to come with this uh, knowledge graph view where you can see kind of arranged in a, in a graphical structure where the links are going and, and coming from different areas. So you end up with this kind of nexus of your ideas and, and topics. And so the idea is that it could encourage you. So, um, so, I, so I make my book summary on the alter ego effect, for example, then I could uh, create a note that's on one aspect of that topic uh, for example, uh, the use of, um, for example, uh, like the enemy, which is a topic in, uh, in the alter ego effect, which is quite similar to Stephen Pressfield's concept of uh, the resistance. So I could then create a link from that one, from the enemy note to the resistance, which could be connected to Stephen Pressfield as well. So then I can see uh, when you look at it in a, in a graphical view, you can then see the journey going, how they're all connected and perhaps find a, mm. a unexpected connection that isn't uh, immediately obvious there. Plus also it's, um, it's just a great way to, uh, to um, organize sketch notes. I think it's, um, I, I'd been wondering how to do that with, uh, with something like Evernote. How do you keep a, how do you keep a visual library when, you know, it's, uh, so it can be such a top heavy, uh, you know, how do you organize that in folders, notebooks or whatever? Uh, I think I brought this up actually in, uh, in Lisbon, uh, where at the sketch night camp there, I, I remember talking with Bruno Winks, who's um, very much into this topic. Uh, and he shared some ideas, but it never really uh, settled with me. And then uh, do, using Obsidian to kind of store these ideas, I, I found actually did uh, land and did resonate with me. This episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast is brought to you by Concepts, an infinite canvas sketching app built for tablets with a stylus, like the iPad Pro, Microsoft Surface, and Samsung Galaxy Tab. Concepts infinite canvas lets you spread out and sketch in any direction. Everything you draw in Concepts is a flexible vector, so you can move your notes around the canvas or change their color tool or size with a simple gesture. Search concepts in your favorite app store for infinite flexible sketching. Okay, so um, here's an example of how it works. So a book I read recently was uh, Story Worthy by Matthew Dix. So I'm just giving my note a title. So I created a new note, gave it a title. Um, now I've already saved the image and I've just pasted it in. Um, I pasted in a markdown uh, because Obsidian uses markdown. Mm, I see. Uh, I've pasted that so in there. Structure um, around the, the link itself. 
Yeah, and and the the link for the image, I take the one from my website rather than mm. uh, uploading the file directly. But I can mm. upload the file into my uh, because it just uses locally stored files, which are could be a PNG, a PDF, or anything like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've written a uh, I have written a book summary on this, so uh, I could add a link to uh, go. Uh, go go to the uh, story and now uh, just do a double square bracket hmm. oh, and, and I can find all the things you might have done here here's like all my I can zoom through all my other notes oh, wow. I could do story worthy book summary mm -hmm. with sketch notes and then I could uh, if I want to I could go click that link it will take me to the note which has the mm the book summary that I wrote, I could read that there. I think uh, potentially I can find my story. Uh, surely I have some more notes. Story worthy by Matthew Dick. Story worthy, there we are. So I also have my uh, plain, the notes, the highlighted notes that I took when I went through it. Uh, and oh, um, I'm showing a preview by holding down the Alt key then you can see <laughs> and scrolling well, through it. It's been tied into that note. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of information in this note, and uh, you can. This is just like the raw ideas that I put down. You can see that I have a comment here. This makes me think of the classic Greek ideas of comedy ends in joy or tragedy ends in disaster, because uh, he he talked about how stories tend to get better, get worse. So I've added my commentary that it's reminded me of uh, Greek dramas. Hmm. I actually should probably create a, a note there about Greek dramas and then mm. <laughs> uh, link to that because that. maybe I'll think of Greek dramas in in something else with comedies and tragedies and then maybe I'll see that connection there in mm. uh, from someone else's uh, writing um, cool. but so I can add links to some other things I'm not sure there's anything else which is uh, which I should link to but what I could do is add some tags so I could do uh, my book, uh, no, it's notes, book. So I have this, um, mm -hmm. so it's nested tags even, mm -hmm. whereby um, it starts off with notes, to say that this is a note, and then a slash, uh, and I can add another tag. So it's book note as opposed to a podcast note or, oh, or note, video note or something like this. Um, it's on on which is the topic that it's on storytelling uh which actually i haven't um, whoopsie story telling so i can add that there i could probably also add um it's kind of um related to so i may say that it's related to marketing mm. uh it's related to copywriting which is mm. uh something that i do and um are there any other topics it's also related to surprisingly it is related to journaling hmm. uh, journaling. because he mentions this one of his points is of how to get ideas for stories and it involves a kind of journaling process hmm. um so i'll just add a, the way you get ideas for a story this involves um bowls journaling so i can add that there which is mm. actually spelled incorrect and for those that are listening to the just the podcast the audio podcast we're going to put a link to the uh, youtube video so you can see what's happening here we'll link right to the location to see so jump right to it but basically what you what's happening is chris on the left he has a two panel view kind of in uh, obsidian on the left is sort of like the code view where he's like writing and putting the tags and such. And it looks very technical if you're, you know, doing like markdown stuff. But on the right side, you see the actual note, which it looks nice. There's an image of the sketch note below. There's bullet points with links uh, that are being produced by the code he's writing on the left, which is kind of interesting. Um, and, and I'm uh, assuming, uh, Chris, that when you're dealing with Obsidian, for the most part, you're dealing, like when you use it, like you consume it, you're using the right-hand side. So you're seeing the output view, like with the nice picture and the links and stuff. 
but when you're creating, you're seeing this code view on the left and then the preview on the right, I guess is how I would describe what I'm seeing. Is that is that true? Do you tend to work more in the output mode or do you also look at the uh, the um, markdown mode too when you look through your notes? Yeah, I um, so I think I spend most of my time in this very view where I have, okay. um, so have the editor uh, typing on the left, preview on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's just to help, uh, especially with an image, you can't preview it any other way. Right. Uh, I have heard actually that there is now a live edit mode. So you mm. can have a kind of WYSIWYG style where you don't need to see the markdown. So you uh, which see the preview and just modify it right in, in, in yeah. situ in place, right? Because if you're, you can't edit the, the preview text because it's preview. So right. this is like editor view as opposed to preview view. Um, however, I do have some other, uh, I have some workspaces. Uh, let's, uh, so I could load a workspace where you could see like, for example, um, reflection workspace, which takes me to my uh, home note. Uh, which is kind of the central note, which is supposed to link to other ones. Mm. And uh, this includes links to big topics that I'm interested in. For example, my uh, my 12 favorite problems, uh, which I have only eight um, <laughs> so far. <laughs> um, it's, uh, this is an idea from, uh, so you can see, I, I explained why you should keep 12 favorite problems. So it's mm. an idea from Richard Feynman. Uh, who okay. said, like, you should keep 12 problems, uh, uh, a dozen of your favorite problems constantly present in your mind to mull over and see if information kind of relates to them. Um, and uh, so, so I could just go through here and see, for example, like, what's the most effective way to learn is one of my uh, favorite problems. Uh, but I also have, like, how can we effectively share great things? And that's a topic I've never... I haven't started a note on, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, maybe today will be the no day that I decide to start that note. And, yeah, uh, so you can add, you can link to it. What's, what what sort of strikes me is this: like, it's a bit like it's like a a fusion of note taking and website building, except yes, you don't have to be a professional website builder or no special code other than Markdown, which is pretty straightforward stuff right so you're mm. sort of like building your own personal website of information is that maybe the right way to think of it yeah that's um yeah i think in fact you can actually publish these pages mm. online as well and uh because it's just markdown files you could uh with the right edit uh, with the right uh website builder job. you could you yeah. can easily publish it and uh, the people who make obsidian offer a tool to do that got it um but I, th I think it encourages, unlike a traditional kind of blog uh, or website like a blog, it, it encourages these more uh, shorter, smaller notes, which you can then mm. connect other things, build. Um, why don't I, um, in fact, actually, I, I thought I might show you, it's not home, uh, welcome. There we go. Because I, I have actually bought the, um, the publish. And you can see, uh, uh, like see that you can embed uh, iframe and uh, stuff like this to, uh, to have that there. And I could, I guess I could find the, so I have an about page with some information mm -hmm. about me, uh, a now page to show what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're building some, website basically if you publish. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I have someone who, you know, maybe they're, maybe they don't, you know, they don't, maybe do managing a website is not interesting to them, but if it comes mm. out of what they're already doing, right, sort of a byproduct, that's an interesting thing. And, uh, you know, for the, again, for those, if you're listening to this, this is probably um, best viewed. So of course, go to the link and check that out. Um, it's definitely worth seeing and seeing what this looks like. Maybe this will spark some ideas and maybe a solution for you. And how do I manage all these sketch notes that I'm producing? Cause that's definitely a challenge I face. And a lot of these, because I have a mix of analog and digital is what about all the books and books of sketch notes that I've made, but they haven't been f photographed and they're not in any storage place or just in a book somewhere. You know, am I losing out on something I learned five years ago because I'm just, it's not in front of me. So this might be yeah. a way to selectively you... start bringing that in. Right. I think I should show you the the graph view as oh, well. There we go. Give a, a preview of that. So, wow. um, so you can see 
uh, it also kind of shows the clusters of information mm -hmm. that you have. Um, so I could, uh, because I've, I've got a bit of a cheat here because I have the entire text of the Bible in my one, um, <laughs> which, uh, I, and it's all linked together. So that gives it a fair amount of um, very nice hierarchy from, mm -hmm. uh, from the top down. But I also have, uh, let's see what something... So, so you can see my home note, which links to other major topics. And I can see this one looks pretty big. So my interests, which is a big topic there. Um, but the, the other approach to it is if I open up the sketch note one that I've made here. Oh dear, sorry, I can't quite actually. I'm just going to shrink you from myself. Um, I can um, view the, um, I can view the graph of just this one. Of what mm, I've linked, you can to. see the other links that you've made. I see, and I believe there is a way. Um, I just need to rejig my position. There is a way that I can. I forget how to do this. Filter depth. I can increase the depth, so I could oh, see, see. Uh, a couple of layers now. Hmm. Uh, maybe if I make you a bit bigger. Interesting. And so now I can. Thinking. Now I can try and see what is connected here, like uh, marketing. Okay, so maybe I can find. Oh, what's this is connected to a cup? No, that's a story worthy. So I could try and just look around and see if there's anything mm. connected to a cup. This one probably would be the argument here is to make sure you're descriptive with your notes. Yeah. So you can see what you, they mean, like at a you know, with just the title. Yes, um, that's definitely true. And I, I mean maybe I should add in a bit more of my how to get story ideas, mm. some of this information add some more links so that I can see where does it connect to, where else right. does it connect to. It could be interesting to um, do no CR on this if it could read OCR and dump the body. Yeah, text, I think right? I so think that's the thing that's missing. Yeah. And like anything, like the challenge I face with these note taking solutions is like when I start getting too complex and I have too much, like every time I, oh, I have to do all this stuff and then it just discourages me from moving forward. So that's my warning sign right mm. is like having too much like tagging has just never worked for me because it just seems like it's like balancing my checkbook or it's not something i'm excited to sit down and do like i'll, I'll do it but like it's not the first thing i think of when i wake up right so uh, maybe that's true for other <laughs> other people but uh wow. this is pretty fascinating i think uh if you're listening to the audio this may have been hard hard to follow just because we're showing mm. some video and but I would really encourage you to go watch the little clip of video that we're gonna that we're gonna post, and you know you'll jump right to it in YouTube, and you can watch this little chunk and see what Chris is doing on his screen, uh, and see what it looks like. I think it would be valuable for you to look and see. Does this make sense for me? Do I see some value in this? Maybe it doesn't, but it's always interesting to know. And then you know you might just encounter someone else who's looking for something like this, and then you can point them to it. So. I think that's I think pretty you, fascinating. You, you mentioned about the effort in in, in making um, mm -hmm. in, in making this, and it, and it is true. Uh, I'm I'm actually like kind of a little bit behind. I have some uh, notes which I started, but I didn't really uh, kind of develop, if you will, uh, because like if if you look right now, it, it's still quite vague, and there's not that much information here. Mm. Um, and uh but the the benefit is if you if you come back to it and like it gives you a reason to come back to it and mm. kind of like creating these extra notes and, and to revisit the information to see what it connects to so mm. i'm now starting to think um for example i'm starting to think about what other book summaries um maybe i could do this here uh other oh well sorry make a new heading, other similar book summaries. Mm. And I could think about my, uh, like I did a book summary of story brands, um, mm -hmm. building a story brand, there we go. Uh, I could add a note, why is that similar? Well, it's similar because it's, uh, uh, because there are ideas of like how powerful storytelling is, mm -hmm. uh, but I could add um, like difference, uh, the, the difference, make it a bit more like a sentence, is uh, that story brand is strictly 
about marketing. Mm, right. Sort of taking yeah. the idea of story and applying it to marketing. Yeah. And whereas, like, uh, I, whereas story worthy, um, I, and then I can. So, so now I've created like another connection there I to the uh, building a story brand on there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And tied it. but I've also got some more context where I can see how they're similar, how they're different. Um, I could continue to add, maybe, maybe there are more parts, which are like he talks about raising the stakes in uh, Storyworthy, which is very similar to uh, in Story Brand. He talks about like the crisis climax moment. Mm, so, mm -hmm. again, there's some similarities similar, there. Similar, yeah. Then I can pull in about, you know, Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey, which they both mm -hmm. reference. So, uh, you can see the shared material. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it does take time, it does take work. And I, I guess that's not right for some people, but um, if you think about it as an alternative to kind of spaced repetition practice and uh, and just like forcing yourself to revisit things or or creating a sketch note, which you then never look at again. Mm, right. Um, and you perhaps forget all, well, maybe not all the information, but you forget some of the information by revisiting yeah. it, then it gives you, by creating a note like this, um, then you and uh, having it in a system where you may land upon the image again when you connect it. So, like, I can go to my, uh, I believe I have a story brand sketch no. notes. I don't think I have it in my system yet, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it is. I think the thing that strikes me when I see you working and I hear you describing it, it's like, so if somebody started is listening and they decide they're going to try this with Obsidian just mm. for fun. Um, and they just want to load a bunch of their sketch notes in and then tie them together, right? So it's yeah. like you're building a you're building a meta information around the sketch note that you did. Yes. The second thing that strikes me is this, like most notes. Like if I think about the notes that I take, I'm pretty active and I maintain them and update them. But a lot of times for people, notes are this static thing that mm -hmm. were done in the past, right? You do this thing and then it never changes. Then you yeah. add to it, and after a while, you get lots of notes, but they're all static. The thing that strikes me at this is it's much more of an active uh, integration, and that you're always sort of like like pruning. It's almost like gardening, right? You're gardening your notes in a way. <laughs> I was, you're, you're, I was going to tell you that that's <laughs> that's the metaphor that a lot of people use in the kind of knowledge uh -huh. management uh, thing is is they talk about it as gardening, where you might you start off with with like a little sprout and then yeah. you you water it some more you give it more attention so that it it grows a bit more and develops uh, but also of course you have this whole garden and you may get cross breeding between cross pollination between uh, different flowers there uh, which can help spark something new which is some of the ideas hmm. this is pretty interesting i think this is something for sketch noters who maybe have been working for a while and you got a collection of sketch notes and you're not really sure how to how do I bring them back to mind or make use of them? This might be a really interesting way to solve it. This or other tools, or even if it sparks you to think about ways that you could organize and again, garden your sketch notes, that this could be valuable. Um, so Chris, um, let's, I want to switch into right into tools. Cause I know you've got some things that you want to share with us. Um, talk to us a little bit about, your favorite tools will start with analog and then we've already seen a little one digital tool uh do analog and digital and tell us a little bit about your favorite tools and of course you know as always we put links in the show notes so you can check these out and find them and try them out if you like uh yeah i i think i'll i'll start with um with paper and um i i'm a big fan of leuchtrum notebooks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah they can be a bit a little, trickier to get a hold bit, of a little bit pricey uh, too i suspect sometimes. yeah and and then more on the pricey side but um yeah it's really nice to have a good hardcover one mm -hmm. uh to, to throw around um likewise your your idea book mike i i still have my the, the only problem with the idea book is it's too nice um, and yeah. so uh, it became my conference notebook but mm. unfortunately um there haven't been so many in-person conferences yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so i haven't used it as much um but um i i have a, a secret uh 
secret favorite hidden gem mm. uh, for a, a good cheap notebook. I think in terms of dollars, it's about $2. Mm. Uh, and it's a Polish company. Uh, let me try and get this right. Um, uh, and the name is um, Narcius, I guess. Uh, and they make these dot note notepads. There are some which are kind of journal style, like this one, where you can just uh, flip it. <laughs> hmm. Vertically. Vertically oriented. Flip it vertically. Right? Um, and then they also have some which are kind of um, fold open. Hmm. And um, the paper is uh, is quite heavy. It's uh, 80 hmm. gram, 80 GSM. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not the heaviest, but it's not really thin. It, it holds its own pretty well. And uh, it's dot grid. Um, and it's what I have on my desk all the time because mm. um, you can just I don't have a problem with uh, with just writing something scrappy drawing something scrappy mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. um, I also keep some uh, index cards or, mm. or a pad of just spare paper mm. uh, may, often for the sketch note army uh, slack oh boy it's really hard to show. I think I'd need to turn off my virtual background like have to do that uh how do i i'll just have them done for the moment then there you go. <laughs> um, yeah it's it's really good for the prompts in the uh sketch oh, yeah. slack yeah <laughs> so here's a jolly santa for you yeah uh or you know you could create a reminder of memento mori <laughs> if you want <laughs> um yeah. it's just good to have those around um i have some under my what is it some uh, pigma microns oh yeah those are those are classic yeah and I, I like having a couple of sizes for sketch noting so that i can do like a kind of thicker headline and then have thinner mm. details and use that for drawing um i also often use um faber castell mm. pens which are very similar but uh, a lot easier to find in poland <laughs> mm. so um i know that we've We've talked about our shared love of the Pentel brush pen. Yes, yeah, it's one of my which things. is just just great for doing a quick thing on the desk. Um, a new a new favorite for analog pens. Uh, again, another quite cheap one. Uh, Big Jello City, I think mm. it is. Uh, I just found it in the nearby shop, and it's just a pretty good gel pen, which mm. nice. Which, which, which is quite nice. Easy to find. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have a uh, oh, <laughs> I've got the uh, the Tombow uh, Fudu Fuden Suki. I have no is idea that how also you a brush say pen. It. It's a brush pen. It's yeah, a, yeah. like a really firm nib brush I see. pen, though. More of a felt tip like brush reference yeah. or something. It, it holds really well, so you can mm. you can get a a lot of different variety with that. Mm. Uh, and I have a uh, a red uh, what's this Stabilo. Those are uh, yeah, I have, those are good German brand. I had a whole load of these in different colors, and then uh, my daughter got hold of them, and uh, very few survived to this yeah. day. That's but the red survived. <laughs> um, so I think that's most of my. Yeah. Uh, I also have like some. Uh, I have a grey Faber uh, Faber Castell uh, brush pen, which mm. is really good for uh, you know, the pit uh, artist mm -hmm. pen. Yeah, I like those too. I've I have a few of those floating ar floating around. Mm. I think in like aqua and grey for the same reason for highlighting. Yeah, yeah it's just just great for highlighting. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I think that's my I think that's my analogs tools. Mm -hmm. What about your digital? I, I I think I I do know you use an iPad, right? So that's uh, probably a pretty standard. Um, what are the tools that you use on the software tools that you use on your iPad Pro? Yeah, so uh, I have a I think it's 2017 iPad Pro, uh, mm. 10.5 inch, uh, which is on my desk right now, uh, and the first generation Apple Pencil, mm. uh, which is still working um Good. despite some some issues <laughs> um, um it, it is getting it has had a fair bit of use that's for sure mm. um and my main app of choice I, um is probably uh procreate mm -hmm. sketch noting 
Um, I just love having the, the layers um, and uh, I guess I, I've just got really used to the way it works. Um, I love the export options. Like I, mm. I really enjoy kind of making a time lapse after I finish a sketch note. So I, I often post post that onto uh, Instagram. I'll have like a, mm. uh, the sketch note and the time lapse because I think it's a fun way to just show, kind of give a bit of a behind the scenes thing, even though it's not necessarily always mm -hmm. uh, mm. accurate. But <laughs> I think it's also great that you see how you may see like an idea and then it's just like nope that's terrible let's uh start again with a different layout or something like this. yeah interesting. Um, but i also sometimes use uh paper especially if i just want to do a quick kind of um sketch of something i don't i don't really want to open up procreate make a whole new cam pick a canvas size create a new canvas or something so i'd rather just like open uh paper for that and i've also used uh concepts a bit because mm. of the um svg output yeah that's nice um which is which is a good feature but i i and i found out this week a mistake i had been doing with concepts um where i had it uh sticking i think it was was a setting so i'd i'd had this issue where the lines would suddenly just join and i mm. had no idea and then finally this week i thought there's probably a setting somewhere that's wrong <laughs> And sure enough, there was. <laughs> so so uh, I think that's most of my mm. uh, digital tools. I did play around with um, using uh, Videoscribe for a while. When I, was when I was still teaching, I used Videoscribe to make some explainer mm. videos of, mm -hmm. um, of English topics for, for students. And that was, so I used concepts a lot then to, to create the kind of, uh, the SVG files that would be used in the mm. video scribe uh, output. So this is uh, where you like you supply it with an image and it has a, like a a three D hand that draws it for you and yeah. it looks like someone's drawing. Yeah, I, there's a couple of those I think. Never used yeah, any was, of them. It, it was quite good. It, you could mm. like kind of arrange a layout. It mm. gives you time to do things. Um, but mm. uh, yeah, the, it, it was kind of pricey uh i wasn't really making them anymore so so i haven't used it for, for a long time yet. yeah yeah well, that's a good set yeah. of tools um so we're still in this pandemic as we speak maybe by the time this is released in uh you know in 2022 maybe we'll be in a better position right now we're heading into a, a surge so mm. the pandemic seems like it's with us at least for a little while longer um and the, the question i've been asking in the last two years has been what do you do to help you to cope with, you know, pandemic, like lockdowns or not being able to go places or, you know, just being careful? What are the things that keep you, keep you going so that you don't go crazy? Um, well, I, th I think there's an element of, of kind of drawing stuff, which has been an, a very nice therapeutic release. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I guess uh, kind of connect hand lettering playing around with that like mm. I, don't, I don't think i'm a very good uh at either of those skills like um uh but uh but that it's fun to it, it's in a way nice because it, it shows that there's potential to grow and mm -hmm. um and it's you know it's nice to have something which isn't uh which i don't need to make money on <laughs> uh mm -hmm. with that um also we you know we're quite fortunate that we're we're quite close to a few forests and mm. I think um, it's been really good to just, you know, get out, go for a walk into the, into the greenery and, mm -hmm. um, and get away from uh, the same four walls. And, uh, right. and also um, the, the restrictions here certainly allow us to, to have that, um, mm. that space. We can, we can go there. That's good. Uh, yeah. And uh, I guess one more thing, which I, I showed you before, we started, I guess. Uh, I, I do play some music like the ukulele, mm. and, uh, and there's one <laughs> to my left right now. But there we go. Excellent. That's, I think that's that, really good. Doing things like that have just been, you know, creating in some way really does, um, creating something pointless in a way, something that, that doesn't need to, um, to to make money or doesn't need to mm. um doesn't need approval from someone else doesn't need to be yeah. shared 
uh, it has really been been good. Um, and I think there are issues though sometimes that, especially with stuff like the pandemic, where you know st financial stability can be not great during lockdowns, right. especially for some people. Uh, I, I've been fortunate that, that we have been quite stable here, but um, so we've had that luxury. Um, but uh, you know, certainly some people don't have that. Hmm. Yeah, that's good to be reminded of. Um, let's shift to tips now. So we always do three tips. Uh, you can do more than that if you if you have more. But uh, three tips for I frame it as someone who's into sketch noting, listening to the podcast or watching, and they're feeling like maybe they've hit a plateau and they just need a little encouragement to go to the next level. What would be three things you might tell that person? I knew this was coming and I forgot to prepare properly. <laughs> Let's see then. Um, well, Alec, why don't we pause this and I'll, I'll just redo that again. So let's give you a minute oh, to think about things. I'll redo think, the uh, intro and then you can be smooth and suave. Yeah. What are my three things to recommend? I think uh, for I think someone who's here. You said something just a minute ago, like create something just for you that isn't shared that like, that's a really good, a really valuable thing. Good. Right, I think it could be useful. Yeah, I think I may, may do, let me, let me get these down because I've always have. Uh, something for you. Drink a water well. Something for... I've been hesitating to drink because I forgot that I put ice cubes in my water and every time I drink it in the metal can, it jingles. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> do I have, I have that actually. Something, create something for you. Three tips, you've hit a plateau. Oh, I, I do have a, I'm now also trying not to steal the tips that you shared. It's in hard. The it's getting hard. I did. So I many. can't. I think you shared like uh, try and copy, copy someone. I think you also shared what would be my next tip, which is like shake up your tools. Hmm. Um, which I haven't heard that one for a while though, and I think there's it's inevitable that someone's gonna have tips that are similar to someone else. <gasps> like it's hard to avoid, so don't worry about yeah. that. I think I may do that one. I may kind of, oh, and maybe I'll do my, uh, what does it want to be? What does it not want to be? Uh, mm, okay. tip. Uh, yeah. how does it want to be used actually, I guess. That's the tip. Yeah. So do that. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. I like, um, you can jump back in and we'll use this part. I'm going to go quiet and do the re redo the intro on tips and we'll just slice it in. So Chris, tell us about, uh, tips that you have And the way I frame it is, Imagine someone's listening or watching. They're a visualizer of some sort, sketch note or something. Uh, they feel good. They like what they're doing, but maybe they've hit a plateau and they just need a little encouragement to get them unstuck and get them moving up again. What would you say? Um, well, I, I think um, the first thing I would say is um, is to is to do is, is kind of what I just said, which is to to create something that's that's just for you rather than uh, creating something that's, you know, maybe for public consumption. And, um, yeah, that could be a, um, you know, of, of a book. It could be just playing around with uh, some hand lettering styles. It could be, you know, trying to do some realistic style drawing, like uh, real life or, or, or go the other way and do cartoonistic style uh, but um, you know just just do something which is try and do something which seems interesting to you and um, maybe doesn't you don't even think it would work for sketch notes but mm -hmm. but you would just enjoy it so it could be watercolor painting or something like this I don't know um, so I think I think that would be one because it you know often you'll find that there's some aspect of that style which you like and you could you could incorporate in so like taking watercolors well maybe you start doing some analog sketch notes again and you like do some watercolor uh in the background or, or, or something like that uh realistic drawing maybe you decide that um you want to change the style of uh you will add a like realistic portrait rather of a speaker at a conference rather than having the more cartoonistic style which you use elsewhere or or something like that so i think that would be one 
Um, I think the next one I would say is, uh, is just to shake up your tools and, and play around with them. Um, I really enjoy just trying out new tools like this. Um, I think it's very easy with analog, but, uh, but can be great with digital as well. Just download a new set of Procreate brushes or something, try a new app. Uh, you know, this Bic pen, I, uh, I picked it up just because it was in the store. It was cheap. I thought I haven't had a, a, a gel pen for a while. Maybe it'll be nice to use. And it, and it was pretty good. Um, I also have, I didn't mention these during the thing. I have some dry highlighters on my desk as well, uh, which I got because I thought, what's, what on earth is a dry highlighter? Mm. And uh, yeah, I don't really use it for sketch notes, but, uh, but it was fun to try out and see what it's like. And, mm. um, and yeah, then you may find that, uh, you know, you try a brush pen and, and that starts to come into your, your sketch noting style or uh yeah by using using this uh gel pen which is really thin um it it's thinner than a lot of the pigma microns that i was using and then that encouraged me to use the small the thinner pigma microns again which i'd resisted because i'd broken one a few years back mm. um so I, I think that can that can be really good and then connected to that, um, I, I like to have the, the mindset of um, what does this tool want to be used for um, and what does it not want to be used for and to try and play around with both of those um, aspects. So, so for example, like a, a brush pen wants to be these big sweeping gestures in my mind, like flowy actions, really wide corners, uh, lots of variation between thin and thick. And so you can you can play around with using a brush pen like that, doing really thick lines and, and stuff like this. But then you can also try and do the complete opposite, where you try and use it for details. And it, it but the brush pen doesn't want to be used for that because it it kind of wriggles away for you. And that can actually create this really interesting style as well, where you have you know you're trying to be precise, but it, it's just not there. And so then you kind of end up with something different from that or or like the gel pen which is the opposite it's it's firm it's stuck it's thin so um you know that's great for doing like these really careful details but then you want to do big filled in areas um well you have to kind of do ha i actually don't know the correct term hatching i think it is or mm -hmm. cross hatching like, yeah yeah things like this or or you could try and do like fake brush lettering with your mm. Uh, your gel pen, your Pigma Micron, and, and and fill it in that way. And I think um, you know, taking those two things in mind, you can you can end up uh, finding some really interesting things that you may enjoy about uh, about the tools that you're using and uh, and new styles and uh, and develop more of that sense of your own. Hmm. Well, those are tips? those are some great tips. Um, thanks, thanks, Chris. Definitely something to encourage you if you're listening, something new to try, some new ways to think about things. Uh, the way we wrap up the show is just uh, to have us, have you share with us where people can find you. Can they find you on Twitter? I know you're in the Slack, so if you uh, mm. were, you know, we're, we'd like, we always love you to go to the Sketchnote Army Slack because we're there to chat with you and there's community there. Every day there's a prompt to draw something so it can keep you active. Um, so I know you're there. And what is your handle on the Sketchnote Army Slack, by the way? It's uh, it's Chris W, uh, okay. because it was Chris for a long time when we were really small, and then another Chris joined, and they had their handle as Chris, and uh, it got confusing. <laughs> so uh. so I became Chris W. <laughs> um, but I also know there's another Chris Wilson in the kind of graphic. I think it's graphic facilitation world mm, with Vizthink. I think he is or Viz. Okay there's something um and so sometimes people tag me and they're like oh great sketch note chris and i'm like yeah that I is great <laughs> not me at all <laughs> um, Interesting. i think his his tag i i can't remember his one my my handle on uh because i am on twitter um where where i probably am the most conversant um mm -hmm. 
my my handle there is Mr. Chris J. Wilson, because it turns out that Chris Wilson and Chris J. Wilson are very common <laughs> names mm. and combinations. So I am a Mr. there. And uh, on um, on Instagram, I am, um, oh boy, I now realize how bad my handle is. I really wish I'd changed it. Uh, I am Sketchnoter, but without the E at the end, because... TR. Yeah, just TR at the end. You're like a mid-2000s uh, startup, right? Flipping. Yeah, I, I'm a 2000 Sketch startup about sketchnoting. <laughs> uh, s- startups who, who take the name sketchnoting, Mike, no one would know anything about that, would they? Um, yeah. um, that's, uh, I, I, I have a website, which is uh, learncreateshare.net, which okay. really should be my probably Instagram handle, but it's too long. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really great. And I think if you go to the learncreateshare.net, you have a, a newsletter that you're running where you're sharing, I think that interesting where you actually practice what you preach and in, uh, in the posts you do share your work. And so that can be a great place to sign up and get uh, the latest stuff from Chris. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I, I had a I had a previous website, actually, which was hmm. well, all, with also sketchnoting. I call it Sketchnote Classroom. And the idea was like to help people with, teaching English with uh, mm-hmm. sketch notes was my idea. And, uh, and uh, I liked the name and, um, but then I realized I'm not a teacher anymore. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I felt bad about just um, sharing kind of tips on sketch noting or sketch noting about sketch notes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so then I, uh, so I changed the name and, and made it much more sharing sketch notes of information uh and uh yeah the newsletter has been a really interesting thing recently a friend encouraged me to kind of i realized i was sharing with a, another friend uh, in private messages just sketch mm. notes i liked um, and so i was like oh maybe i should maybe other people would like this like too public, yeah. <laughs> so uh so yeah I, i've been trying to get that at newsletter.learncreateshare.net but um unfortunately there are some technical difficulties with HTTPS and hmm. things like this. So I don't I know where. It's probably that. the best thing is to go to that website and then Twitter and between those two places where you're active. Twitter, you can see when things happen. Twitter, you can find the sign up there very okay. easily. Okay, got it. Okay, perfect. Well, Chris, it's been so good to have you on the show. Um, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing about Obsidian and hopefully that will be helpful for some people that are looking for a way to like, maybe you've been asking the question, so now I have all these sketch notes. How do I organize them? This might be the perfect episode to answer that and get spark your thinking around what you could do and maybe send you off in a new direction that you hadn't before you encountered this episode. So thanks, Chris, Chris, for being on the show. It's been really good to have you. My pleasure, Mike. My pleasure. And so for everyone uh, listening and watching, this is uh, another episode of the Sketch Note Army podcast. Until the next episode. This is Mike signing off. Talk to you soon. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or... Go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show.